Taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week. This is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. Hey everybody, welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast for March 21st, 2020. This is your source for news, leaks, and insights about games and the gaming industry, and also your source for sanity during self-isolation. We are going to be... Uh, it's going to be a fun show today. We've got lots of... Uh, we've got some interesting stuff to talk about in the gaming news. Also, we're doing a bunch of giveaways. We're going to be giving away some games on Steam. We're going to be giving away uh, a couple of Steam gift cards. Uh, all of this to try and, you know, help you all out during this uh, very difficult time in which a lot of us are being uh, self-isolated. And, yeah, we just want to we just want to try and help out with that, keep you all sane, give you some stuff to do if you're stuck at home. So, um some prizes for those of you listening live, and one for those of you who listen after the fact. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for all that. It's a Saturday edition of the show. My name is Ash, and I'm here as as always uh, with Cybe City. And how's it going today, sir? It's going good. <clears throat> it's good. Um, yeah, things are uh, things are starting to act up. I went to the store yesterday, and there was a lot of empty shelves. I've never seen so many empty shelves in my local store. So, hmm. that's a little, uh, that's a little concerning. I mean, don't panic everybody. That's, that's the worst thing to do in yeah. a situation like this is, is to panic and scramble. And, and, and part of the reason, like the, the whole reason behind like the toilet paper shortage and everything seems to be that everyone thinks that their neighbor is buying up all the toilet paper. So they feel like they need to stock up because there won't be yeah. any. It's, it's and something it's just that a, I, I, I just don't understand. Problem. Yeah, I, I we talked about this a little bit yesterday when you were streaming, but it's like, it's like, why the thing that that you absolutely don't really need, like, not just yesterday, but just overall, it's like, it's like, my goodness, I can't, I cannot reason as to why this is a thing. I just, it just why the toilet paper? Yeah, it's like why the toilet paper, and and the reasons for it are purely. Um, like fant like like fantasy based. It's like yeah, everybody should probably you know get a you know a second normal container of how however much they need. You know for for some people that's you know um, if you don't want to go out shopping for it in the next two months, then yeah you'll you'll have to pick up an extra bag. But it's like why are some people walking away with like eight to ten? It's like eight to, eight to ten like full groups that this like. It's so like how many do you go through a year? It's like maximum four. So why eight to ten? Like, what are you? Do you think you're going to be selling it? Do you think it's going to become a currency? <laughs> it's going to be the yeah. It's, they're going to be the the. Uh, it, it's like uh, Nuka Cola caps, where cap. yeah, yeah, the bottle it's caps bottle from. Cap. Uh, and it's man, we should. It, it's just, it's pretty pretty degradable form of currency. I th I, I would figure, but yeah, I don't know. They're going to be like. Gonna be like gold in the apocalypse toilet paper, yeah. Anyway, don't panic, and uh, yeah, everybody who has a bidet right now is just laughing. So, all right. Uh, oh, we're also gonna be talking about we're we're gonna be giving some recommendations and tips for finding free games, high, heavily discounted games, and uh, just other ways that uh, other recommendations of ways you can entertain yourself during this this time. So, uh, yeah. Should be a fun show, plus uh, some some of the ordinary gaming news as well. We have uh, Gaben, good old Gabe Newell, gave uh, an interesting Q and A that Sab's going to dive into, and uh, we've got some stuff going on with GameStop right now that is, I mean, yeah, yeah, they, it was kind of, it was kind of messed up. The the GameStop is already a struggling company, and uh, they did not help their image this week. All right, uh, so let's see where to get started. Um, so the way the giveaways are going to work, we are going to ask a trivia question, and we're going to take the first five correct answers that are posted in our Discord server. So if you're not on the Discord server, join up now. The question or the uh, link to that is in the description below. Join the Discord yeah, we're, server. We're, we're gonna we're not gonna get to it like right away. It's gonna yeah, be yeah. Bit. We're gonna give you a few minutes to get 
you know to get set up here we'll we'll start doing the giveaways in a and in and a we're gonna do it here. this way just because there 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 is a delay in certain locations and countries and yeah and the whatnot. reason we're doing yeah the reason we're doing the the top so we're gonna take the top five correct answers and do a random draw so that'll be yeah. like the first five people to post the correct answer we will do a random draw of those five people and that person will win uh win and the then, giveaway and we're and yeah we, we are doing it that way to sort of mitigate the like Y'all listen to the podcast at different, you know, different inter- different qualities of internet connections, and like, uh, so some people are going to hear the question first, that kind of a thing. Um, so we're trying to mitigate that a little bit, uh, make it a little more fair, a little more even. So we so will that's still be doing. talking about the um, the questions, but we're, we're going to give it a few minutes. Uh, Is it so that way everybody, everybody who's listening, has a chance to um, get on, in onto the Discord. Then they'll see the question being posted, and then um, no editing. Don't don't edit your answers. Don't edit <laughs> your answers. Yes, edited answers will first, be considered first invalid. First five correct. First five correct posts on each question will be considered um, as long as they're correct. Uh, if you misspell something slightly, it's fine. So just just yeah. type like a madman. Um, yeah. So those are the but, general rules, and uh, the the channel that you're going to want to post your answers in is the giveaways channel. It's a brand new channel that I just created. It's under the community section on the, on the discord server. Um, so, so, so that's where you'll, uh, that's where you'll put your answers. All right. There'll be gaming related questions. Yeah. Mostly follow related as a matter of fact. All right. So, um, oh yeah. And one prize per person. We'll say that as well. So, um, on the topic of uh, finding things to do if you're self-isolating, there there's a number of uh, a number of game publishers are are putting out putting out games at uh, at severe discounts and even free right now. And so we're gonna go through some of those. Uh, the top one I want to mention right off the bat: Tomb Raider, the uh, 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider is 100% off on Steam right now. You can grab the game for absolutely free. Shout out to Notional who uh, pointed us to that on our Discord server earlier. Uh, so yeah, and and I would recommend I would recommend the game. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. It's a good old uh, good old classic Tomb Raider brought into the modern age, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good game. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, as well as the the entire trilogy is good, but you can play the first one now. Uh, for absolutely free. Um, as far as new games that are out, uh, Doom Eternal is sounding really, really good. I haven't been able to uh, give it a try myself yet, but I'm intending to this weekend. And somebody, I think it was Reticulum, just said in the chat, it's highly recommended. So, um, yeah, if you are looking to pay full price for a game, Doom Eternal is a good choice. I would also recommend Ori and the Will of the Wisps if you like atmospheric puzzle platforming uh, I wouldn't say, not so much puzzle platforming but it's um it's like a it's a very atmospheric uh, action platformer that is sort of a metroidvania style of game uh, big map where you know you can travel anywhere but you can't access everything until you get certain skills that kind of a thing um, anyway really good game and uh, yeah I spent some time streaming it on Twitch yesterday with uh, some of the members from our community chatting it was a good time so you, you know you can check out the replay of that stream or just check out the game and if you uh, you know if you enjoyed the first game in the series then uh, you're probably going to really enjoy this one they they took they took a winning formula and they they turned it you know they just added to it and made it uh, made it really awesome reviews on it are really good and uh, yeah I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it as well i was hoping this next one would be discounted for all you but it's it's not unfortunately but i would definitely recommend checking out the outer worlds if you are looking for more for an uh for an rpg to check out and uh if you don't want to get it uh, you know if you're adverse to using the epic games store you can get the outer worlds directly on the microsoft store so uh that is that is one loophole you can use um if you if, again, if you want to play the Outer Worlds but don't want to get it on the Epic Games Store, um, yeah, been having a real fun time with that one. It is it is uh, it's a great RPG uh, from um, you know the makers of Fallout New Vegas, 
and uh, the, the world is incredibly well crafted uh, it's it's a great sort of um, you know kind of a cyberpunk take but you know it's, it's like a mix of cyberpunk sci-fi and fallout um, did I just say a mix of cyberpunk sci-fi and fallout it's like a mix of uh, mm-hmm. cyberpunk mass effect and fallout and it's uh, except not Mass Effect, not in the sense of being of like encountering alien races and stuff like that. It's all humans, but it takes place uh, in a you know in a far off solar system, and you fly between planets, things like that. Great, great little RPG. I would uh, I would I would definitely recommend it if you enjoy first person RPGs. Now, unfortunately, like if you uh, if you are subject to motion sickness, uh, it can be a um, it, it can induce motion sickness pretty badly in some people, but I've found if you have a really, really strong machine, like the higher you can crank up your frame rate, the better it is, you know, the better it'll work for you. All right. So, uh, just want I'm looking through the chat. Lots of, uh, lots of conversation happening right now. So time beans asking call of Cthulhu or Sinua's sacrifice. Um, I've only played yeah, part. Uh, that's Sanua's uh, sacrifice is actually one of my like um, heads up. It's on, it's on sale right now. It's on sale a lot uh, at the moment. So I think yeah, it's that's... Slightly different maybe by region, but yeah, it's it's on sale right now. You can check that one out. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's like, and I would suggest that one primarily because there's another one coming out soon, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a launch title. So. If you play it this summer, then by the fall, um, or uh, or when it when it hits the stores, so to speak, um, you're gonna have something kind of cool, so mm-hmm. to, to kind of check out. So that I would really highly suggest that one. Um, yeah, for sure. Call of Cthulhu. I I, I started playing that one, and it, I unfortunately didn't get too far through it, but it was pretty interesting. Uh, the first little bit of it. Um, I, so I yeah I wish I had more of a perhaps you know somebody who's played those games fully uh, if you could weigh in that would be great I uh, will try to catch your comment in the chat Niv Ozzy says if you want a uh, CRPG I would recommend Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2 both are on sale in GOG excellent thank you for that I was, I was going to mention that one as well um, and also Pathfinder Kingmaker is currently on sale by 60% um uh, another one where it's like and this one's really good this game's pretty good because what you can do with both of these games is you, you you pause them anytime so if you're working from home or if you're like you're at home and you're taking care of kids that you know you normally don't have or something like that these are great picks because it's stop and go whenever you need to and and it like leads itself to that quite well and so um, that's something that I would I would highly recommend um, both of those games. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Other things you can check out. Sea of Thieves just added a whole bunch of content. Uh, so if if you already own that one or you've been interested to check it out, might be the time to. I can't speak for uh, you know haven't dusted it off to check it out myself. But if it's already in your library and you haven't opened it up in a while now might be a good time to check it out uh they've really added a lot to the game uh do you have you have you seen some of the new content do you um Saib, do you know um is there anything you can say I, about I, it? I only yeah it's still one of those games that i can't um like I, i'm <laughs> can't really play it too much because it's first person uh a lot um i believe it's first person no um it's the uh, it's the Windows 10. That's what it is. Yeah, you're. So, yeah, I'm. You I'm still not to upgrade on to Windows, Windows 10. So, it's security issues and, and and a bunch of other stuff. And it's one of those things that that I watch other people um, play it and like hop on there from time to time. It looks very solid. It looks very good. Um, it looks like it's it's been getting a lot better. Uh, for quite a while now and it's it's like wow this is something that you know is 
is growing finely despite you know despite the difficulty that it had at its launch despite the the you know all the stuff it's been you know highly supported still again you know what i understand some people they don't like being burned you know when when they pick it up originally but for a lot of people it was like it wasn't even that expensive so i think i think that you can you could definitely do worse and it's one of those types of games where it's like if you like the general premise of it and you just found there wasn't enough to do then there's a ton of stuff to do now and it has a really really funny community and it's 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 a meme maker like seriously it is seriously a meme maker constantly like just it's it's just one of those moments that's just so awesome just in general i love it so much yeah <laughs> uh as far as like what it does for for creation of memes is like there's so many good ones that have come out from it um so yeah i i i highly recommend um if you're into that kind of stuff check it out um again i think it's still only on the the windows store so unfortunately but you know whatever it, it, if if you have yeah. the ability to run it, then you have the ability to run it. If you don't, then yeah, you need obviously. you do need to have Windows 10, as far as I know. Yeah. All right. Um, other things: the Resident Evil 3 remake demo is available now. You can check that out on Steam if you want to uh, see what they're doing for that game. It gives you a taste of the game. Um, also, this is an older one, but if you uh, if you enjoy a really good platformer. Uh, Metroid, Metroidvania and you like games that are in a retro style I would recommend The Messenger that is one of the best games that I have played over the past few years uh, it came out in 2018 so it's a couple couple years old now but it had uh, it had DLC that was uh, that came out for it last year uh, it was a free DLC package so um, or am I thinking of a different game Anyway, there was a DLC package for it, so that was really... Um, I, I haven't had a chance to check that out, but I played through the entire base game, and it was, it was a fantastic experience. Um, it does, like, this time-shifting thing from, like, the 8-bit era to the 16-bit era. It's kind of... Uh, doesn't take itself too seriously, but it also has incredibly fun gameplay, so I would definitely check that one out. And if you're into more obscure indie games, itch.io is is offering a ton of games for free right now like a whole a whole bunch of the games that are available on that platform have been discounted 100 percent neko and, collins says another fun game to play is rim world oh uh, yeah rim world's great i i it's one of these ones where i can't sit in the graphics but it the the setting in the world is like i love the the depth of it and of course it's one of these ones where it's like there's so much depth to it that, of course, you know, whatever. And yeah, you know, if you have a good imagination, it's it's pretty good. But it's mm -hmm. one of those ones where it's like, it's a great concept. I absolutely love the concept. I like the stories that you you can create from it. It's just not like I just can't get over the the particular style of it though. I, there's something. It's, it's not that I don't play games like it. Or that I haven't played like games like in the past. It's just there's something about it that that puts me off. Even though I know it's a great game, it's it, it is a great game. But it's just there's something about it that just like I I just don't like the generic like look of or the general look of it. Not the generic, but just the general look of it makes me kind of weirded out hmm. somehow. It's one of those things I just don't click with. That's fair. Um. One thing that, uh, just following up on one of the earlier suggestions, um, there's another game that's free right now, another Laura Croft game called Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris. I totally forgot that this thing even existed. Like, completely forgot that this thing existed. It's like a four-player, like, top-down gauntlet slash D&D type game. Okay. I did, I did not know that this thing even... Like, I had completely forgotten that this thing existed. I, I, I remember I... He hearing a rumor about it. It came out in 2014. Um, it's, I think. It's like, wow. 
It's so weird. Well, I mean, yeah, go ahead and check that. I, I still don't, like, uh, this is the first I'm ever hearing about that one, so. Yeah, it, it's, that, it's like a top-down Diablo-esque, like, running around with four other players on the map. Really? Huh. You know, fighting giant monsters and stuff. So, and so kind of a genre-breaking Tomb Raider yeah. game. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. It was, it's so, like, I just saw it among the list of the uh, free Laura Croft games that are currently out there. Um, it's like, it's, you, you can get it and all of the, like, all of the, um, the expansions or DLC or whatever you want to call for the game, they're all under a dollar right now. Um, so was, you pick up the whole thing for like two bucks. Hmm. So like you, you get the ga- main game for free, which is normally 22 bucks. And then you get all the DLC basically for two bucks. So that's nice. all they're basically asking for that is like, Hey, you know, throw this in. And yeah, they they have this huge like collection of Laura Croft bundle. They bundled everything, which normally is like 460 bucks. Um, and they're selling everything at 80 three percent off for 77 bucks total and that's the so for the price collection. of that for the price of a triple a game mm-hmm. essentially you can you can get the entire laura croft bundle that's pretty good looks like it on on steam at least so that's weird hmm. <laughs> that's weird the new ones oh. like uh, they were i i really i enjoy the tomb raider games they're really good in my opinion I mean, they're, it's it's the kind of game where if you like the formula, you like the formula. And it's, you know, you'll enjoy the game. If you don't like it, then, you know, they're definitely, like, they've got, it's, you don't play the game for the combat. The combat is, is, is not the reason you play the Tomb Raider games. Let's just put yeah. it that way. All right. Uh, Luke JS in the chat says, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is free until Sunday. Nice. Thank you for that. Uh, from TB Elias, Wasteland, uh, Wasteland 2 Director's Cut. The chat jumped on me again. There it is. Wasteland 2 Director's Cut is also on discount on GOG. Let's see. Cuckoo says, just bought Greedfall on GOG. Uh, yeah, I didn't check if that one was discounted, but if you if you like a, a really good story-driven RPG where your choices deeply impact the story, definitely check out check out uh, check out greedfall yeah and uh let's see what else now i noticed the xbox game pass is offering you know like the the super deluxe edition whatever the top edition of xbox game pass you can get into for just a dollar right now and then uh, there's a bunch of some of the games we've mentioned are included in that including ori and the will of the wisps and uh, outer worlds now what i don't know because I didn't go through the process of, like, signing up to see all the fine print. I don't know if that's, like, just the first month. Or if you have to, like... If you have to sign up for six months to get the dollar per month deal. I don't know what the fine print details are on that. But if you are interested, if you know if you're looking for a variety of things to play, you might check out the Xbox Game Pass. All right. Tome is free on Steam. Cool. The, the last Deus Ex game is on sale too. Yeah, there, there are tons of games on sale right now. If you just go look through Steam, look through Humble Bundle, look through GOG, yeah, Rick, you can find lots Rick of stuff. And, Rick and Morty's virtual reality game is on sale right now as well. Um, I don't recommend it for its uh, virtual reality gameplay. It's kind of like it's it's one of the it was one of the kind of early releases when it came to to VR tech. Um, however, it does have some really some really hilarious lines in it. So if you if you're a fan of it, it's it's essentially like a basically a an episode. So, but you play it through Morty's eyes. So that's that's kind of it's kind of cool <laughs> that way. That's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's jump into doing our first giveaway here. Now we had one of our uh, one of our YouTube members, Terror K, gifted us some some Steam keys for some uh, some retro games, and uh, we're gonna give a couple of those away today. And I'm actually I am going to go to random.org. He gave us four keys, and I'm gonna 
go to random.org to uh, to decide. I will let the atmospheric noise of the planet decide which one we're giving away first. We're giving away Flashback. Flashback, which incidentally it is on sale on Steam right now as well. But we are uh, we're, you could win a um, you could win a copy of it right here for free if you answer our trivia question correctly. The year is 2142. After fleeing from a spaceship but stripped of all memory, the young scientist Conrad B. Hart awakens on Titan, a colonized moon of the planet Saturn. His enemies and kidnappers are snapping at his heels. He must find a way back to Earth, defending himself against the dangers he encounters and unraveling an insidious extraterrestrial plot that threatens the planet. On its 25th anniversary, rediscover this classic. Constant consistently ranked among the best 100 games of all time and it's very very well reviewed um so uh, sort of a yeah retro style platformer game so yeah you could win that if you answer our trivia question correctly like i said you go to the giveaways channel on our discord server we will be randomly drawing from the top five correct answers to the the first five correct answers i should say so the top five is the first five um, to, uh, to give that one away. All right. Fallout question. Fallout lore. Uh, this is a, about a character in the Fallout lore. So who, who was it in Fallout that reproduces by making pods filled with tiny seeds? Give us the name of the character. Now, while y'all are doing that, we'll get on to our first news topic of the day. So, uh, let's talk about Gaben. So, we uh, Gabe Newell gave a gave a Q and A slash interview. Um, I've only seen summaries of it, but uh, Saib, you you've been digging into that where he talked about um, he talked about Half Life Alex and he talked about the future of gaming tech. So uh, let's dive into that. I thought you were going to post the question first. Oh, I should. I guess I should. Yeah. I was like, wait, wait, aren't you posting that question? I'm like, where did he post the question? Well, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess we hadn't, uh, I guess we hadn't really discussed that. But anyway, uh, so you're posting the question in the giveaways before you talk about it directly. You're going to give like a, a, a five minute warning. Oh, is that how and we're doing it? Okay. Yes, five minutes heads up. You're gonna post the after five minutes. You're gonna post the question in the Discord, and then after about a minute or two, you're gonna read the question live. Okay, all right. We'll do that for the for the future questions. Anyway, uh, let's get into the let's get into the Gabe and stuff. So, Gabe sat down for a really long interview, um, where he talked mostly mostly half-life but he also mentioned like general science tech and then he talked a little bit about epic so right now he said that as far as the epic thing goes he said that it's it's coming out across as really negative and really toxic but long term the competition is good and they're very libertarian based guys over there um and i really have to trust gabe and i think one of the reasons why um, he talked about the experience of of how I think it was with Apple. They wanted to try and get something up on on the Apple Store, and the Apple Store just flat out told them no because they were a competitor. They're like, "Sorry, no, you you run Steam. You're not allowed to put this up on our platform." Yeah, it was some kind of a streaming tool, like a yeah. stream a it, stream it, link or something. And it was like that was the moment that he snapped and that was the that was i believe it was then that he that was around the time that they said look any game is free to go up on steam like we're not using the the green um remember the the, the green, green light, light steam green light yeah so which was terrible because you you just basically paid a you know a, a firm to like basically just put it up for you but yeah this is this is something that 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 he 
that drove him to to make that decision of like, look, we need an an, an, e an equal platform for all, and that that's what he really embraced at that moment. And this was this is this is huge because you don't have that in the Apple stores. You don't have that in the um, you don't, you just don't have that in the in that kind of a world anymore. So it's it's um yeah it's it's not quite there. Uh, as far as the sorry, as far as the question goes that was asked, uh, nobody's actually got it right yet. Um, and I'll give a hint in a little bit if if everybody continues to get it wrong. Um, so yeah, you're all close, but but no cigar. Um, so yeah, it's this is this is for the most part. Um, yeah, for the most part, this is just where where he changed his mind on that, and I think this is really important because and I and I'm really thankful for Steam for taking the stance because there's a lot of games out there that that deserve an equal place to have a platform, and they allow they, it, it. You need to have a voice for everything because it's like free speech. If like there's a lot of speech that I don't like that's crazy, that's stupid, that's mind-numbingly dumb, that's that's you cannot you cannot in in any way, shape, or form defend that train of thought, period. But for some reason, you know, um there's people who who are out there who believe it. But the when we start to silence those people, then who else do you silence? What's the next step that you silence, and and where's the the magical line that you have to draw on the ground, and w at what point is like we've seen some just some insanity. There's a dude who was fired for listing a bunch of things that you can't say. He's like, okay, here's a list of things that we don't want anybody in the company saying, and then he gave the list of them. He's like, these are the things you can't say, and he was fired for that. Because he said the things that are on the list that he can't say, in in a controlling, oppressive um, society or 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 function or whatever that you're whatever you're dealing with, when you when that is the the cause for your dismissal is just listing the things that you can't say, because they're literally things that you just cannot say. It's like wow, that's just that's that's gone too far. And so I was really happy to see that, you know, I've been happy with Gabe's work for quite a while now. Steam has improved since the whole, you know, fight with, with Epic. Um, and they have released new features and they have re released updates and they have gone around to to improving their system more because they, they realized that there were a handful of things that they needed to do better. Um, and that's entirely acceptable. Some people complain, they say there's just too many games there's just too many games on Steam. And my answer to that is no, there's not. Because they have an algorithm that brings things to your attention that's fair and for the most part not biased. Um, and and this is the same thing that you have in, in anything where it's free, like you know, Wikipedia or or um, you know, what used to be YouTube. <laughs> right it's like there's a lot of videos on youtube where there's nobody who's watched any of them you know there, there was that i remember the 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 one like towns guy they they posted up their um their their i can't remember if they i think they were bug anti-bug team at a, in a county in in the states small small county um they had meetings every week like clockwork, and they uploaded those meetings on the internet. And then some late night, I think, some late night talk show host, I think it was Conan O'Brien, found the fact that these guys had posted their meetings, had followed through every step of the way, had had been involved in the process exactly as it was supposed to be, every step of the way, and that all of their videos had no views. And he's like, these guys are amazing because they, and people, and suddenly they got millions and millions of views. Why? Because people were entertained by 
by the mere fact that these guys stuck to their guns on like you know being direct and, and honest as they could which was really hilarious and, and 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 whatnot but but it's like if there's if you have room for that kind of stuff then you have room for everything else and that's where steam is and i and i like the concept that's behind it and um gog is is really good uh they don't have the tech to to do you know unlimited games they're, they're still kind of small they still have some issues with that um but they're they're moving in that same kind of direction so right now my two primary stores are gog and and steam and i believe that that these are you know i believe that these are really really the the most important thing um so yeah so that's that's the that's kind of the off side news that they had um then he talked about two other topics that are really cool so i'll, I'll hit up the big one now half-life half-life has always been a, a, a game that has been created to solve and to prove technical things within the within the video game world um is how gay gay put it and i completely agree with the direction and the way that that they're addressing it um I really think and I really believe that that just overall um, the reason why we haven't had a, a Half-Life 3 yet is because there's been no reason to put out a Half-Life 3 as far as the technical prowess is concerned. He said, could they have been pu pumping out Half-Life games uh, for the past few years, you know, just bringing in checks and, and bringing in money all the time? Yes, they could have. Um, should they have for the story i believe yes and this is where i disagree with him um half-life exists to 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 push the boundaries of technology i understand where he's coming from but i also believe that that lore and story is also a boundary that needs to be pushed and that there were times and that there are ways that they could have added that in the past few years where that would have been an, an important thing. So I disagree with him there for, for sure. Totally disagree with him. Um, because it just doesn't, it just doesn't ring true, so to speak. So, yeah. Um, so it's, 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 it was, it was an interesting thing. It was an interesting thing. Um, so yeah, uh, Half-Life Alex is going to be really good. It's really going to push the boundaries of what we see and how we look at VR tech. Um, there's nothing truly revolutionary in and of itself, but how they've put everything together is. And I mean, that's really what you had in, in Half-Life 1 and 2. It's like, there's nothing truly 100% revolutionary but it was the way that they combined everything together that ended up creating a new uh a new explosion of information and a new explosion of gaming um so yeah it's it's that kind of uh it's that kind of a world that we're looking at with this so um yeah uh oh yeah like i said uh th those of you who are answering in the in the giveaways chat uh you're very close you're very close but uh yeah just not not quite not quite there's, there's one person there's one there's one person who's yeah got so, it someone does have the answer yet and Some, might... somebody does have the answer so i guess if you're really quick you can kind of like scan and say who's one person who said one thing there's there's a couple of people who've said one thing um you can guess as many times as you guys want um but I, like, yeah, I almost feel like we should give it to the, but we said we said the first five correct, so so I guess we'd better stick to that. But yes, uh, so I'm 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 gonna give a hint now, um, for for many people who think it was one person, um, it it when when they um when this was first uh, dropped, or as far as like the lore is concerned they referred to themselves as two different people. Um, and then at some point, they did become one 
entity, um, which is still, which is still a little bit different, um, because even in the even in in the later games, um, you still have this, uh, you still have one, one can still live on when the other person of the duo dies. So, yeah. So, so I think we have now two. No, it's the same person. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. Feel free to Google the crap out of it, by the way. You're, you know, you're more than welcome to where, where you have the open book of the internet in front of you. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. leave it open for a little while. If it, if it, uh, if nobody, if nobody else gets it within the next couple minutes, we'll just cut it off and give it to, uh, the person who has the correct answer here. So, all right. Um, all right, what else do we have to say about um, about Gaben's talk then? So the the other big thing that Gaben put out is the the technology that is coming for game development, and he was correct. And I've talked about this numerous times. Um, you've heard me talk about how the newest AI tech that is coming, the newest like brain interlink things that are coming the newest um the things that are are being in that are in the early stages of design and conceptual thought before they're like and as they're tr as people are attempting to put them into practice um this technology is coming and it will 100 percent revolutionize everything revolutionize the way that um, entertainment is built, the way that games are made, the way that everything's made, it will definitely crash um, a lot of big companies who just don't have the imagination anymore, and it will definitely like change everything. So this is uh, this is huge, really huge for where um, for where the the overall direction is headed for gaming. And it is something that that is is really really pushing the boundaries of of technology. And Gabe talked about it uh, like it was something that they have been keeping their eye on and have been exploring. And I suspect as long as Gabe is still around in the next couple of years, I suspect strongly that that they will seem will be the ones to push into this full force when it, when it does finally start to evolve, um, that this is something that they're going to keep their eye on. Yeah. Um, yeah. To so, at least, to at least be a publisher, if not jumping on the chance and jumping on the ability to actually host this technology. And that's the technology of basically sitting down with, with an AI or a computer or a mind reading device that essentially just creates things and creates whatever you want to on the fly. Yeah, and, essentially, and, it, like you're talking about, uh, you're talking about like uh, almost like holodeck technology, but uh, where it just reads exactly what you're thinking and creating it. That's a, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a baffling idea, especially considering. <laughs> I don't know. You may not want to have other people around if it's like. If you're just daydreaming, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I, I mean, like, I'll, I'll I'll expand a little bit on this, like I have before. Basically, it's like you're gonna be able to sit down. You're gonna be able to tell the AI, "I want to create a game," and the AI will be like, "What type of game?" And you'll list its the general like concept for it. You know, whether it's shooter, survival, um, you know, multifaceted, uh, you know. Per, you know, in, is it an interactive thing? Is it a is it a, a a watchable story? Is it something that you interact with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And then, so you set the parameters, and then you'd be like time era, location, type of characters in in the book, and then you'll get into like, so give me a, you know, give me eighteenth century England, so it'll create an entire world for you that's based on 18th century England. Then you'd be like, all right, now 
localize the story to take place on um, on a moderately sized island, um, you know, hundred hundred uh, hundred miles in diameter, roughly, um, and then boom, you know, it'll do that. It says, all right, I need um, I need uh, fourteen thousand quests, ranging from simple fetch missions to um, to interactive uh, dialogue uh, based around the concept of of normal townsfolk activities and murder because you're making a Sherlock Holmes type thing and so then the world creates all these quests and then and then it's so then you're in this island on this world and you have so now I want you to tie these quests together um, with with five uh, percent of them leading to a centralized quest that revolves around a mysterious figure Moriarty type character and boom it'll add that and and then you'll be able to start playing through it and tweaking things as you go it's like I, do, I like this one story here but I think this character would be better if it was a it was an older man stuck in a you know in a in a small house and you know give him a peg leg and boom it'll adjust the character on the fly like this is the stuff that's that's coming um this is the stuff that that once the ai is smart enough to interact with you yeah it can create games itself but that creative hand pushing it in certain directions is what's going to make it make and break games in general so yeah it's it's that that's how it it evolves mm -hmm. awesome very cool yeah okay and uh we're just we're gonna cut off the first uh first uh trivia question there that we asked and we've got uh, we've got one there were there were three three two. three correct thus far yeah, three corrects thus far. And uh, uh, yeah, congratulations to... to Adam Anderson Five, who uh, got that one correct, and uh, or who was the first one to post that, but also came up as the uh, you know as the as the random draw winner of that game key. So thank you so much, everybody, for participating in that. Posting the second question now. Um. And uh, then I'm going to turn to, again, I'm going to turn to random.org again to uh, choose which is the... So we're going to give a, give away another game key, and then we're going to give away the uh, gift cards, the Steam gift cards. All right, and the, uh, the next game key that we are going to be giving away is the Atari Vault. Relive the golden age of gaming with 100 of the most iconic... Atari games from the 70s and 80s. Now with online multiplayer capability, this extensive catalog includes classic Atari titles like Asteroids, Centipede, Missile Command, and many, many more, paired with intuitive new controls. You can win the Steam key for that if you get this next question correct, which has been posted in the Discord in the giveaways channel. Uh, another follow lore question. Which vault had all of its pre-prepared entertainment removed? So there you go. So um, and uh, just like the oh, I should go through. I should go over the answer of the previous one. So so the the question was uh, you know who first question was who were you produced by making pods filled with tiny seeds? So many of you said Harold, and that was so close to being correct. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, and and if you're talking about like Fallout Three and onward. Yes, that that is technically correct. Although his seeding format did change at that period, so it was both a period time sensitive question and unique to when Harold referred to the uh, referred to Bob as a as a separate entity, um, and was strongly hinted that the tree at that point was somewhat sentient, but was not. Um, was was and was for the most part fairly integrated into him there was a point at which it was theorized that he could have just clipped him off and it would have killed it and, and he would have been fine 
but after he um, after the tree started to root through his entire body, then then it it started to go at that point. So, mm-hmm. Saib so came up with these questions. So you're gonna have to be very technically accurate <laughs> in your answers. <laughs> Let's just it's, put it that way. I, I'm also I'm also asking questions that somebody can't just. Um, Hopefully you wouldn't just be able to Google the question and get the answer straight away. Yeah, might have um, to do a little digging. You you might have to do a, do a little bit di- a little bit of digging here. Um, I I told Ash to highlight one of these words in the in the last, latest question that he posted, um, and he forgot to do so. Uh, but the 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 first hint for the second question is I have highlighted the word all all not not some but all all of its entertainment uh pre-prepared entertainment was removed before the vault was activated which was that there is two uh vaults that had um a similar experiment to them uh make sure that you don't post the wrong one Okay. So. Well, the answers are coming in for that. Uh, let's talk about what happened with GameStop this week. They were, uh, and there's been some updates to this story, but um, GameStop came under fire for instructing their uh, instructing their employees to basically uh, ignore any lockdowns and closures that uh, were, you know, in effect for uh, because of certain, you know, because of restrictions that are going on in certain areas. Uh, right now and uh, also um, you there were there was something to do with lineups going on that you wanted to talk about as well Saib so yeah so this so just in general um, GameStop and, and EB games it's kind of an essential service yes I feel very very sorry for the people that work there that are that are eventually going to lose their jobs Um but at the same time, this is their own damn fault. And when I say their fault, I mean the 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 um, the heads of the company. Uh, right now, with this whole thing going on, um, there are lots of restaurants and stores that are open that are advertising. There's a number of advertise, advertisements that I saw this morning logging on to like pulling up Google, pulling up YouTube. There's a whole bunch of them saying, "Hey, hey." Um, you know, we, we are not letting people come in and sit down in the restaurant right now. We're trying to limit the, the the person-to-person interaction that's going on. We have increased our our cleanliness routines for um, for for our, our food makers. Uh, we are going out of our way to make sure that they're that nobody is infected who's touching or preparing the food. We are limiting the food preparation to single par- single people at a time so that way you're not you're not getting four people to touch your sandwich you're getting a single person to touch your sandwich to make it and they're wearing gloves and they're taking every per- extra precaution and that we're we're actually making this is this is actually like a hardcore thing that we're doing in an attempt to stifle the connection and we're delivering your food straight to um every house within a certain distance uh we're delivering it for free and they've just essentially they've co-opted some of their existing staff into delivery runners, and so you can buy it on uh, on the app. You can place an order, and somebody from the re- restaurant will run out your order to you, um, and and it's been guaranteed to be have only been ar- interacted with a single person. Wow, what a service! These are fast food restaurants. These are fast food restaurants. Small family shops are doing this right now. And I spoke with, with one person. He's like, yeah, uh, we started to deliver. And actually, we haven't really lost that much business. Like, like, yeah, we, we're running around extra. But right now, um, things are still okay for us. I was like, wow. <laughs> Between the drive through and their delivery, everything is running smoothly. Imagine that concept, EB Games. Uh, GameStop, you know, all the different names that it's under. Imagine, imagine if you would, uh, um, having, you know, having the foresight 
to set up a system where you deliver somebody's games to them in a localized area around you. Imagine that. Imagine basically going out of your way to create, I don't know, say the Uber, or not not Uber, the the Uber Eats. Yeah, sorry, that's that's the right one. Uber Eats or the, you know, whatever like hotshot food delivery services. Um, you know, I've seen people have, you know, I've seen construction workers ordered coffee from McDonald's and have it delivered to them at wherever they're working on some oil or gas or, or power thing in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, of a neighborhood or something like that. If they can manage to get that working, oh, gee, imagine what you could do right now by having somebody hand deliver an item that has been sterile, sterilized, like that, that, you know, you get the shipment of stuff, you, you open it, you open it with somebody who's wearing a mask with somebody who's wearing gloves and who put, you know, slides it into a, a, a thin plastic bag. And then they, they seal that bag and then they take that bag and they deliver it to your doorstep at, at a small extra cost. It's like lots of people would do that for some reason. Instead you, you've sent out this thing going, Oh no, we're a vital service. And, um, you know, uh, we, we need to be open and, um, and yeah, we had uh, doom and, uh, and animal crossing come out the other day, which caused a whole lineup of people to be lined up around the block, waiting to get their game in the cold, sniffling in the wind so that they use their, their sniffly hands on their nose. And then they touch the door and s seriously, can you not think on how to improve your service? by going out of your way to come up with a solution to these problems. It's not like you've seen Blockbuster, which was in your business, essentially, you know, fall off a cliff and die and went, gee, uh, maybe, hmm, maybe I should come up with a solution to this problem. Maybe I should come up with a, a way to, to offer an additional service. I mean, why they haven't created game rooms you know, in the past like five years is completely beyond me. It's like gaming cafes have exploded, have exploded all around my area. They're, they're, you know, a few years ago, there was none, never even heard of the concept. There was one store that had kind of like a tabletop room that they had set aside sort of. And in the last like five years, several of these stores have just exploded in, in my, in like, in just in the couple of the cities around me, there's now like 10 of them. Like, uh, why, why can't you see what the market is asking for and shift your, your stores and shift your experience to offer some of those things, you know, like there, there was, if there's room to grow in the gaming industry, why aren't you offering it? You know, there's, there's places where they're starting to do like, you know, arcades and stuff like that. Again, I ask GameStop, where, where's your, where's your independent spirit? Where's your, where's your problem solving ability? And this is why, this is why, this is why they're failing. And this is why GameStop will ultimately die is because they can't see past the end of their nose. Oh no, we're a retail game store. We don't want to put in an arcade. That, that, what, what does that have to do with our technology and, and the service that we offer? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Sure. An arcade's probably a bad idea right now in the current climate. So is a, a gaming cafe, but why this stuff wasn't around five, six, ten years ago, why they didn't think to, to establish this, why right now they haven't come up with a way to, to Uber eats your game purchases to you. Again, it's, it's like if, if, if a small mom and pop coffee shop can come up with a solution for this, then why can't you like, seriously, what, why can't you, I can use PayPal to, to send some cash to a, a mom and pop coffee shop. That's two blocks away from me and somebody will run it to my house and guarantee that they took extra precautions not to not to touch the 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 lid of the coffee to they used gloves and 
they can do that, but you can't find a way as a as a big conglomerate store internationally with stores in, in almost every single major city in the world, you can't figure out how to like, you know, arrange that to happen and to make some extra money on the side from it. It's like this is this is why GameStop will die. Because they are incapable of creating a problem to a solution. They are run by marketing people that their only concern is making money off of a preset concept that they have. And this is this is why Blockbuster failed. This is why all these companies failed. Is because they don't have the conception to think outside the box to say, oh, gee, maybe, maybe we should come up with another way to do this. I just, it's, it's yeah. shocking. And, to and me. because of that, then they're motivated to... to stay open and and do 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 things like declaring themselves essential retail during a crisis time which is ridiculous i mean that's such uh, again, paper thin logic that it's again, it's again absurd. the the coffee shops around me are open because they they've said no in store seating you can't come here and eat your food but we will run it out to you for free right now because we value you as a customer. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it, hold, 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 hold the phone. You mean that, uh, uh, you know, that that's a good idea? Oh, my God, yes. How, how is this not possible that, that they can't see past the end of their nose on this to say, hey, yeah, we're still we're still an important store. But, you know, and, and again, with this with these with this latest release, it's like how they how like how could I have arranged that as a store holder in my local area? Well, I could have put a big sign on the door and, and, and got a couple of those like sandwich signs and put them out, out of the door. Please do not line up. Please do not line up. Here's our phone number and here's a discord server for our local area for your games. Please get in one of these things. Tell us that you're ready and we will, um, you know, if you've paid for your game ahead of time, um, we will meet you at the door and hand you your box. You just have to show us your, you know, just hold up your phone on the other side of the glass. We'll look at it. We'll go, yep, this is your order. Here you go. That could have been done that way. For everybody who needed to come into the store and purchase it, please wait in your cards. We'll call it, like, essentially, like, here's a, you know, take a number. We'll call you, basically. It's like, they could have done that. They could have done anything other than, hey, let's have a bunch of nerds line up around a block standing next to each other for hours on end, you know, sniffling in the cold, because there's one thing that's going to guarantee that, that a whole bunch of sniffling, coughing people are going to cough and sniffle on each other. It's that. Like, again, use your Goram brain. It's just, ugh. It's so stupid. Uh, yeah it's, it's so stupid <laughs> well this is definitely not a good look for them and uh yeah. do, do, again i just can't get over the def declaring themselves essential retail is absurd i mean it's absurd and uh certainly they certainly didn't have the best interests of their employees in mind there but uh, it's it's also it, it is an update to this story. It turns out they they're now closing down all of their California stores indefinitely. But they're also not paying in their employees during the shutdown. So this is a bad situation all around for yeah. for GameStop employees. Again, I just had a thought. Here's an idea, GameStop. You can use this for free. Close the game physical store location, but have a delivery service with every game purchase. That we will we will we will personally put in a roll of toilet paper and your game and hey. deliver it to your house for an extra five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Free roll extra, of toilet extra, paper with every game. Extra yeah. extra five dollars. We, no, we will do this. Buy a buy a roll of toilet paper for sixty bucks. We'll throw in a free game. It's like it's like again. How how can they not like? So their, their reaction is fine. Okay, we'll shut down all of our stores permanently. Like, indefinitely. 
which is which is no doubt going to lose a lot of jobs. And again, instead of thinking on how can we do this to make a um, to make it to make a system that works for everybody, how, how can we do? How can we think outside the box to to bring a solution to a problem? They can't because they fired all those people ages ago. You have a store idea? Great, we'll buy that store idea. All right, you're fired now. Why? Because because we we have your we have your I, IP. We have your ideas. It's an, an, a, one of the greatest examples of this is is Disney. Walt Disney worked for a guy um, who basically like had Walt's first idea of of a cartoon, and he took it all and he like consumed it all, and then he basically told Walt, you know, GTFO. I have your all your artists. I have your ideas. I own everything. You don't own anything. There's nothing you can do. I I've I've taken over everything. I am your boss, and now I own everything. I don't need you as the idea man anymore. Walk away. Ha 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 ha. It was after that 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 Walt Disney created um, uh, Steam Steam. What was the what was the first cartoon called? Steam Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. That's yeah. is he created Steamboat Willie, created a soundtrack. A soundtrack to go along with the animation. And it blew everybody's mind. Cause they had never they this they're watching a person, a, this this animated character, and he's whistling, and you hear the whistling. Oh my goodness, I what what is going on? I my I've never had this level of entertainment before. I have to watch this another 10 times in a row. This is what happens when you get rid of all of your idea people, which EB Games did a long time ago. Long time ago. EB Games being the... Uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the that's, Canadian, that's, that's the Canadian version. That's the Canadian version. version. It's it, the same yeah. company. It's the yeah. same company. They're just, they're just under different names in different areas. It's the GameStop. Um, GameStop, yeah. GameStop, you know, basically came up with this... And and it's like it's like that that that's that's how you shoot yourself in the foot. You want to shoot yourself in the foot? Get rid of all the people that be that are behind your ideas. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant idea. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the the companies that aren't willing to adapt in the digital age is uh, are uh, the yeah the ones that are going to fade into fade into obscurity, like Blockbuster and. And again, like this is, it, it it would have been so easy for them to say to to call Uber Eats, right? To call these different, you know, there's half a dozen of these different companies that do this right now, and say, hey, we want to have people deliver their games. Um, do you think you guys can add us to your system? I mean, just that alone, like it would have been better if they created their own system. And and got into delivering other things too, right? Like, hey, here's your um, here's your delivery of Doom, with your side order of Coca Cola, two liters, um, your toilet paper, and your pizza. Is there anything else I can get you? Uh, you know what? Throw in a second pizza. All right, boom, done. Hmm. Maybe not pizza. Maybe chips. Maybe there's bags of chips. Maybe it's it's something, right? Like, like, make a partnership with, uh, with, with some other people. You know, do what you can to say, hey, we want your business. How can we serve you? It's like they have never heard of this question before, right? Because this is the question that, that Blockbuster was given. It's like, you're losing customers everywhere. Why don't you look at a person and say, what is your need? How can I serve you? Well, I want to watch movies without having to drive in the cold to go to your store to pick it up. Do you still like coming to our store sometimes, though? Yeah, I like coming to your store sometimes. Do you like picking up physical DVDs to give as presents to your family? Do you like collecting you know, physical media? Uh, you know, do you like collecting special collector's editions? Do you like collecting posters? Do, do you like doing any of the stuff that is commonly assorted with, or associated with, with this kind of stuff? Maybe we can do this stuff for you 
And that way we don't have to close your local blockbuster. I just the, the, the single question. Hello, customer. How can I serve you today? Hmm. Goes you know? out the door, goes out the door when these people take over, goes out the door when these money heads take over. Oh no, there's a process. There's a, a, a single path. We must follow this path irregardless of, or sorry, regardless of where it takes us. Again, irregardless is such an incorrectly used word. It's like, why? Why? And and, and this is why they die. And this is why they die. Yeah. It's, 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 hor it's, it's, hor it's horrible. Horrible. Just horrible. A couple of people, speaking of theaters and movies, a couple of people have mentioned the, the voodoo service. Uh, which is apparently, uh, Russ Hunt says, uh, all new movies are available to watch at home right now on Vudu. Um, I, I think I saw somebody else mention that earlier as well. So, yeah, might be uh, might be an option to check out if you're looking for some movies to watch. Did you say, did you say Vudu or Hulu? Uh, it's a, it says Vudu. So maybe. What I, is it? I don't know. I haven't heard of it, but uh, I mean, you can definitely. Um, I don't know. Somebody should check that out. <laughs> let us know what that is, uh, or um, or Russ Hunt. Let, let us know if that was a typo or if that's actually what the service is called. Anyway, let's get back to the. Uh, so the the second trivia question was uh, so which which of the Fallout vaults had all of its pre prepared entertainment removed? The answer was Vault Fifty Five. And uh, we had uh, five respondents, so let's let's see who our winner is here. The winner is R R R R R R R R R R parentheses noobs. So uh, congratulations, you are the winner of the Atari Vault uh, Steam key. So you might as well give away uh, how many more keys do you have? Well. We have uh, we do have a couple more keys. We'll do those on a future podcast. But also, uh, we we need to move on to uh, giving away the uh, the actual Steam gift cards. Now we will be giving away two sets of fifteen dollars Canadian in Steam credit. So uh, that's going to convert to whatever your local currency is, depending on exchange rates and stuff. So that's. It works out to roughly, you know, ten to twelve dollars U.S. right now, I believe. Anyway, put that to work. This is just the number of which we can buy them on. Yeah, we we have to because of where we are. You know, we have to buy it in Canadian currency. So, um, yeah. And and it's not like it's not like they give us a choice. It's like five, ten, or what was it? Five, yeah. fifteen, and yeah, it's like five, five, ten, or twenty, fifty, hundred. So anyway, so yeah. we'll, we'll be so giving it's away incremental. Yeah, exactly. All right, um, and so the next question, we're moving away from Fallout, but this is still a gaming-related question. I'm, I'm not going to mention which series this is from or which game uh, game lore this is from, but, I mean, if, if the question turns out to be too difficult or too obscure, we'll, uh, we'll give some hints to narrow it down. Yeah, you'll be able to Google this one, I'm sure. Yeah, but, yeah probably. But... But again, All right, so same uh, deal. You know, first five correct answers in in the giveaways channel on our Discord server. We will will random draw from the first five correct answers to give that one away. Then we have we're going to give away some a second uh, second Steam gift card. But uh, we're going to open that up to people who are listening after the fact as well, because mm -hmm. um, we want to. Not everybody can listen to the to the show live, uh, so you know we 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 wanted to. You know, open it up to some of our regular listeners who who all listen after the fact and aren't able to catch the show live. Anyway, the third trivia I'm... question here: This game character puts all of their decision making, moral support, and uh, wisdom um, seeking, I guess, in to what they into their companion, whom they believe is a miniature giant space hamster. So this this game character puts all of their decision making, moral support, and uh, wisdom. Uh, I think there's a word missing in this question. 
Basically, they're the person. You're not reading it verbatim. This person. This, this someone puts their decision making, moral support, and wisdom in what they believe is a miniature giant space hamster. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to get the answer from that. I'm just saying it doesn't quite make grammatical sense. Uh, anyway, you should be able to get okay. it from that. I had to phrase it in the in in. I had to phrase it as a question. Or uh, as an answer to a question. Or like Jeopardy. You know, who is? Mm hmm And, uh, gee, I thought, I thought people would have a harder time with this one. No, no. There's like ten correct answers already. Ugh, okay. All right. Um... So this this one's definitely this one's definitely one. So our final question, um, our final question is going to take a while, because I think people are going to go nuts with this one. So the um, the the fourth and final question, and this one we're going to give a we're going to give like a day for. Yeah. So this one's not going to because... be time based. We'll take all of the correct answers, and we'll. Uh... We'll do a draw from that, and we'll give it. And we'll give it like twenty four hours. And if you soon. want, and if you want, you can. You if you think you've got this, you can DM me. Um, you DM me. Uh, uh, I don't know if Cy wants to be DM'd, but if if you really want, you can you could DM me or sorry at me at the um on on the Discord. You can also DM me on the Discord too. My DMs are open on the Discord. Um, but basically, yeah. So this is this is the this is the question. I'm going to write this one out because I, I don't want to I don't want to mess this up as far as the phrasing of it goes. Um, yeah, I'm just going to mute myself while I type here. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mean we we've also set up a uh, we set up a quarantine sanity channel on the Discord server. You can use to uh, coordinate events, coordinate. Um, yeah, if you want to find people to game with or coordinate, you know, uh, watching a live stream together, that kind of thing, give give advice, tips of ways that you can uh, stay sane if you are stuck at home, self isolating, or have have an imposed quarantine. And I, I know a lot of our listeners out there, they actually do. There are actually, uh, you know, government imposed uh, quarantines going on right now. Uh, so, you know, some of you may not even be able to leave your home so we set up a room specifically for for that so that uh, yeah you can connect with people and uh, yeah exchange ideas or you know find games to play together video games other kinds of games also i gotta mention um when we were talking about games that were discounted and free earlier uh i need to add this one in we got a message from uh jay Jay Gray at Artalsorian Games. He's like the the right hand man for uh, for Mike Pondsmith, of course, the creator of Cyberpunk. Um, they have they have uh, very recently put out the Cyberpunk Red um, Jumpstart Kit, which is sort of the preliminary edition of the new Cyberpunk tabletop RPG. That uh, that is uh, the full full version is going to be coming out sometime soon, but it's kind of they're coordinating with CD Projekt Red, and it's kind of, it, it connects lore-wise to Cyberpunk 2077. But anyway, Jay let us know that there's a number of companies that have made their tabletop RPGs uh, free to play to help people through what, the crisis, basically, his words, to help people get through this crisis, including their own... Um, their own game, Teenagers from Outer Space. So you can go to Artelsorian Games, check out Teenagers from Outer Space, and uh, that that's free right now. There's also, uh, you know, there's also some tabletop RPGs from other companies that have uh, that have been made free. So, so you're looking for things to do that are not necessarily video game related. You want to play some uh, tabletop RPGs with people. Some of them are are free, and there's probably some sales on right now as well. You can play games with other people via Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, Astral, or other virtual tabletops, or even just voice and video chat. is basically all you need. All right. Checking in on the, the question. 
Oh, Cybus still typing it out. So yeah, I'm still I'm still trying because this is gonna this is a wordy, not a long wordy. It's a it's a the clue is in the words, and I'm trying to make sure that I that I say it correctly here. But I th I think I have it here. <clears throat> okay, yeah I, so the the previous question the the miniature uh, space the jet. Miniature giant space hamster question. I thought I thought people would have a harder time getting that that one as well. Um, I I'm very I'm very familiar with this character, and I had forgotten about the miniature giant space hamster reference until Cyber reminded me of it. But yes, the character is indeed from Baldur's Gate, and and uh, it's Minsk and his quote unquote miniature giant space hamster, Boo. So congrats to everyone who got that right. Let's do the draw right now for that. And the winner is Loopy Fruit. So congratulations. Uh, we will, I will DM you in a little while to uh, let you know how we'll go about getting that Steam credit to you. All right. Do we have, uh, do we have a question yet, Saib? Almost. Um, uh, so we have. <laughs> I didn't know that you could react on Steam or on, uh, Discord rather to somebody typing, but there's like a whole bunch of reactions to the Cybsidian and his typing message. Or no, no, that's somebody. That's Trauma Sentry who t put that as a message. Never mind. I just right, told totally right. him. there. Does this does this read well? Don't say it yet because I'm going to post it in the thingy first. Does this, does this read correctly for for the the answer that I'm thinking? I I I don't think so. I don't. I think this is too obscure. It's uh, like it definitely falls under the category of trick question. Well, it is a trick question, but I mean that that's why it's going to take. That's why I think it's going to take a good day for for pe for some people to figure it out. So, okay. Yeah. So I think this is fine, and yeah. Okay. So, okay. All right, so I'm just going to post that question, and uh, if you were listening, I mean, you can also, you know, you can put an answer if you're listening live, but if you're listening after the fact as well, uh, you can go to the giveaways channel on our Discord server and uh, put what you think the answer is there, and we'll cut it off 24 hours from four minutes from now. So, you know, 20... 24 hours from when we end the podcast, uh, we'll, we'll cut off answers there. We're, I think we're, aren't we streaming? Yeah, we're streaming the next uh, um, podcast. So for the uh, for the Cyberpunk um, community podcast. So we, we could just, we'll, we'll announce it after the Cyberpunk community podcast. Yeah, well, so, we'll oh, so, so we'll, you, we'll you want to go we'll until. Take it right up, we'll take it right up to there. Okay. Um, up to the end of the Cyberpunk Community Podcast tomorrow. Okay. Which is uh, going to be happening. That happens at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's going to be on our channel this week. It is the it is a collaborative podcast between us and three other channels. A lot of you know about it, but if you're new, um, we do we do a rotating podcast with the Mad Queen Show, Last Known Meal, and the Neon Arcade. It rotates between those four channels, all about Cyberpunk 2077 and Cyberpunk info in general. And uh, so, so definitely, uh, definitely check that out. It's on our channel this week, apparently. And we look forward to seeing you there. And I think that's about all we have for today. So a reminder, yeah. So we'll, we'll, you can submit answers in the. Um... Good lord, they already have it. <laughs> I, I thought I was being serious? smart. Yeah, they already got it. I was like, what? What? Okay. All right. Actually, they've given... Um, the, yeah. Yeah. They've actually given a few answers that are, um, that are basically it. So, okay. All right. Well, we'll compile that and let you know. <laughs> okay, then. Jeez, Louise. Just... I, I thought this would take... I, I thought this would take them for like... I thought they'd be running around forever. Oh, I gotta make my trick questions more trickier, apparently.
Okay. Uh, shortly, shortly later today, uh, in a few hours, um, Luna. Uh, uh, sorry, not. Um, uh, Moon Tag is going to be doing a playthrough of a cyberpunk um, dungeon crawler type game. It's not a. Obviously, it's not connected to cyberpunk directly, but it is a cyberpunk inspired dungeon crawler called um what is it called again Cor uh uh conglomerate 451 yeah conglomerate 451 and you're gonna have to uh, explain who moon tag is she's gonna be doing that on 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 uh twitch so please uh please uh head over you know um follow us there and uh join in for the fun on that so all right, and with that, we will wrap up the show. So uh, remember that uh, it's not about getting the answer in quickly for this last question. It's uh, it's open for the rest of the day until the end of the Cyberpunk 2077 Community Podcast tomorrow. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thanks for the great conversation in the chat, for supporting the show by listening live or after the fact. Please don't forget to slam that like button before you leave. And that really helps us out. I want to give a special thanks to our Patreon supporters and channel members who help make this content possible. Our big dang heroes on Patreon, Josh, Robin, Timebean, and our two anonymous supporters there. Thank you so much. Our channel members, Mr. Pazernik, Jer Schultz, Game Notes, Night City Punk, and Terror K. If you're listening after the fact on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, or any of the other platforms this podcast goes out to, we appreciate your interactions there as well. And don't forget, you can join the live show on YouTube on Wednesdays and Saturdays where you can interact with us and other listeners and be a part of the discussion. See the Discord server for exact times and schedules. The Augmented Reality Podcast is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ash. On behalf of Saib, thank you all so much for listening. We'll talk to you again very soon. <laughs>